Last time on Eurovision Song Contest, my thoughts. I had a little bit of trouble with keeping the video under 50 minutes and therefore I had to cut the show in half. Here is part 3.1 of my thoughts. Hello, this is J.E. Realize. Thank you for flying with us today. Oh boy, I don't know where to begin with this one. I mean, I do have a schedule. I do technically know where to begin. But the fact was, I didn't realize I was going to talk so much at length with all the stuff that was going on. I thought it was just going to be normal length videos, like 30, 40 minutes each. But that isn't quite what happened. But now that we're back here, let's get immediately into the jury votes. As usual, the national jurors start us off. There are 37 sets of juries across the continent and Australia. All you need to know is that they present their points in the standard give points based on which country is giving out the points. It's standard fare. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, and 12 points given out to the top 10 based off of how high you rank. But yeah. We go into this and you start to notice something is wrong. First up is Ukraine since they won in 2022 and were supposed to host in 2023 giving out their first set of 12 points to Switzerland. Then is the United Kingdom who took up hosting duties for Ukraine giving out their 12 points to Portugal. You know, standard stuff, except you notice the delay. The delay between Malmö and whoever they're in contact with. And it's basically the same no matter the distance, about 10 seconds. It doesn't matter if you're getting points from up the road or all the way across the planet. Just absolutely painful and it's kind of sad that Sweden didn't correct it, even when they took a mid-jury break like they always do. It's kind of painful to watch all that extra time spent in dead silence. But yeah, we continue. Eventually got Luxembourg presenting the votes. But you notice something about this voting session. Stop me if you heard this before. But you have this one leader break out straight ahead in the jury points. And it's just essentially a fight for second at this point because the first place leader is so, so far ahead. That sound familiar to you, L? It should. And you got a bit of a fight for second originally between Portugal and Ireland, then Italy shows up, then France shows up, and then eventually Croatia shows up but doesn't quite make it. But yeah, there were a few notable moments, I guess. Really depends on what you'd consider a notable moment. For instance, we got the lead from Voyager in Australia, giving out Ireland's first du Zippois in a long time. It's been 16 years since they released that song, and now it's finally paying dividends. We got Greece being represented by Elena Paparizou, who, as you may know, is living in Sweden. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was green screen behind her. 10 points go to Cyprus, 12 points go to Switzerland. At this point, I'm kind of over it. Then we move on to Netherlands, except they're not being given out by any Dutch person. They're being given out by Martin Oerstedal. There was an initial cheer because the Netherlands had been entirely absent in this contest. Again, I'll bring that up. But then we cut to Martin Oerstedal, and goodness sake, they got booed so hard that the anti-booing technology practically did nothing. Credit to Martin Erstedal. Yeah, you run a tight ship, but at the same time, at least he knew when to keep it short, and we just moved on. We got a few things said by the Portuguese and notably Austrian representatives for the jury vote, which ultimately come out rather shallow because, uh, you know, stuff like that has to be vague for the purposes of television consumption, but at the same time, it really means nothing when you do something like that. You got a lot of previous Eurovision representatives representing the juries, like Mimi Cat from Portugal, you got one of the rock and roll kids in Ireland, you got Constanca. But yeah, this is not unheard of. This happens a lot of the time, and 
It's tradition. Really cool. Not much I can say about that. You got Cyprus giving 7 points to Greece and 12 to Croatia. I mean, I don't know if this was really because of organic voting or if Martin Erstadal and the rest of the scrutineer team just cracked down on him and forced them to not be this way. I don't know if this is genuine or not, but, uh, you know, a part of me will kind of miss it. Song contests are a lot more subjective than, say, football, where in some cases I would recommend stuff that a lot of people would consider controversial, like goal assist technology, because the impartiality of referees can really detract from a more clear-cut explanation of how the rules work, as opposed to a song contest where everyone votes based off of opinion and or knowledge of music and or experience. But yeah, one thing that cropped up as we keep receiving points, so many people gave their 12 points to Switzerland. I thought I highlighted that indirectly, but so many people got really annoying about it. Like, one person or another person doing it is fine. Like, with the case with France, when everyone broke out into song going, Shit, damn. And that sort of stuff. But Switzerland got so many, broke the codes, and what-uh-ohs that you could get whiplash from that sort of stuff. Like, that is just... It went from charming to annoying as an orange fairly quickly. And finally, we get points from Sweden, who is hosting this year, from France, who represented Sweden in 2016. So far, there's no sign of Marcus and Martinez possibly beating Franz in ranking. But, you know, the night is young. And then Franz closed it out with a simple, we finally found you, Nemo, and gave the points to Switzerland. That's it, all 37 jurors have voted. And the top five so far look like this. Ukraine had 146 points and is in fifth. Italy has 164 points and is in fourth. Croatia is in third with 210 points, but France is currently in second with 218. I don't need to tell you who the current leader is. Switzerland has 365 points, even more than Lorraine. Sound familiar? Well, it should. I mean, yeah. Big jury leader energy right here. And what's more impressive is same amount of jurors, but more points from each. As for the bottom of the list, in fifth last, well, fourth last, depends on how you count it. It's a tie between Georgia and Slovenia. The fact that Georgia is in the same conversation as Slovenia is just what? In third last, that is 23rd place, is Norway with 12 points. In second last is Finland with 7 points. And last place in the juries overall and therefore the first country to receive their public vote points is Estonia. Four points, which I can totally see why. I'm prepared for the public to kind of disappoint me. But what I am not prepared for is the results of all the other little contests and the rigmaroles that we are about to get into, including the Marcel Benson Song Awards. So... Let's take a break, talk with our future self, and get that result going. Thanks, past self. Now we're going to get into all these extra awards that are handed out because the first place trophy just isn't enough. And first up, we have the coveted Marcel Vincent Son Awards, which are handed out in three categories. There's the Composer Award, which goes to the composers of the song. There's the Press Award and there's the Artistic Award. I'm going to take a look at the recording and then come back to you on that. Okay, after watching that video, first off, the prizes were given out by Christopher Bjorkman. Still waiting on that book, by the way. Christopher Bjorkman talking at length about how these awards really complement the Eurovision Trophy, 
and are meant to highlight more artists, a lot of the work that goes into Eurovision, even if it might not produce a winning entry, which, you know, standard stuff, you gotta highlight that sort of stuff. But first is the Press Award, and that one goes to Croatia, Baby Lasagna, and uh, there's uh, much ado about nothing in regards to Baby Lasagna explaining what the song is about. I mean, at its heart, I've already told you, uh, guy deciding to move out from a village and go check out the big city and that sort of stuff but the acceptance of the award was kind of lackluster in a sense but it was still real cool the baby lasagna got something okay next up is the artist award which goes to best performance as judged by certain criteria and that goes to nemo of switzerland we get nemo on down and a bit of a talk about how Nemo reached out, or the crew, I don't know, to this one team to try to get them over and said, no, nah, I don't have the time. Then show the song. Okay, I think I can do it. <laughs> kind of hilarious, that sort of stuff. But then finally is the Composer's Award. And I was kind of worried because of the different order, probably suggesting that the Artist's Award and the Composer's Award were given out to the same people. But Christopher Bjorkman kind of sent Nemo away and then talked about how, you know, in the past, composers were honored too. And it's only fair that we bring this award back for them. Which, yes, I really love that idea. But then the award is given to the team that wrote Nemo's song. Well, shucks. Okay, but now we have this entire speech about them saying don't pass up an opportunity to try something new, try something out there, try everything. But then again, don't say no. Something sounds kind of odd about that phrasing. Eh, whatever. It has been a long time, I feel, since the last time the Marcel Benson Song Award was given out to three distinct groups. Wait, no, it happened in 2022! I should look for the live presentation of that. Next up is the OGAE Award. Basically, this independent Eurovision fan club consisting of multiple countries come together ahead of Eurovision and select their favorites. And, uh, you know, each one gets the same set of points that uh, what would happen in Eurovision. But let's review who's at the bottom. San Marino! Ah, filth. There's also Czechia at the bottom. And Ireland? Wait. Huh? Okay, the 11th way tie for last place and zero points, basically a mulligan. Let's move on. Wow, Ireland, zero points from the OGAE fan poll. Hilarious. But yeah, top five. Fifth place was France with 188 points. Fourth place was Belgium? You mean to tell me that I wasn't hallucinating, that I wasn't going mad, that that was a really good song, so many people agreed with me, and yet it did not make it to the final. Goodness sake. Third place is Switzerland with 290 points. I forgot to mention Belgium got 223. Second place went to Italy with 338 points. Really, Italy? Huh. And first place was Croatia with 350 Six. Wow, these different interpretations of what people think are really good entries really goes to show you a lot about how other people think. But things can turn out differently, starkly differently, when you get into the full results. It's kind of based on whim, but ultimately, good performances and good songs will out. Usually. And now on to the Your A Vision Award. A bit of a remodification of the Barbara Dex Award to move away from ugliest outfit to most striking standout outfit to encourage diversity, new voices, freedom of expression, all that sort of stuff. We had Sheldon Riley and Karia win in the previous years. This year, the winner is Croatia, which does not surprise me at all, because that outfit, man, 
I want to cosplay in that outfit. It looks really cool! That interpretation of cultures in that outfit, man. Like, big points. Like, that is a deserved winner. Then Ireland came in second. No surprise. You have such a... I don't even know what to say. A performance and presentation and two outfits. Kind of cheating, but, you know, really turns some heads. For good or bad. And then third, king of shoulder pads and patron saint to parents. It is Jost Klein. And, okay, technically it still counts. Okay, seriously, those shoulder pads and that hair, how could you possibly go wrong if you're playing a character? You like this tablet? You shouldn't. It's garbage. Always be wary when someone offers to throw in a free tablet with your phone. Okay, let's see here. Eurovision.tuvalu. Yes, Eurovision.tuvalu. Ever heard of Tuvalu? Well, they're certainly making royalties off of every .tv domain. Well, I don't know, assumedly. There's also the Federated States of Micronesia, which make money off of FM radio. The reason I am currently looking for the rest of the world and doing that before the semifinal is I want to give a little bit of a build up to the grand final results and the semifinal results. After all, if say San Marino received some points in semifinal two, I would feel a little bit better about my life choices. Okay, I found it for semifinal one, how the rest of the world voted. One point goes to Finland, two points to Australia, three points to Portugal, four points to Serbia, five points to Lithuania, six points to Luxembourg. Heck, even the rest of the world gives some love to Luxembourg. That is kind of surprising. Seven points to Slovenia. Okay, nice, neat. Eight points to Croatia, 10 points to Ireland, and 12 points to Ukraine. Pretty wild, pretty interesting. But now let's move on to semi-final two. How did the public vote there? One point to Czechia, right off the bat, okay. Two points to San Marino. Only two? What, Latin America doesn't care? What is going on here? I swore Chile is in the contest. Well, I guess two is better than nothing? Imagine San Marino getting zero points in the semis, that would be awkward. Three points go to Norway, four to Georgia, five to Greece, six to Switzerland, seven to Estonia, eight to Armenia. Okay, I'm not too surprised about Armenia there. Ten points to Netherlands and twelve to Israel. Guess who's gonna win the rest of the world votes in the grand final once again? But yeah, moving on. For the grand final... And this is kind of, sort of, a spoiler for what I'm going to talk about, rather my past self did talk about, in the grand final public vote. But only like 1 38th of a spoiler. But yeah, Eurovision doesn't really talk about the rest of the world in its own context. The rest of the world doesn't have a jury vote, and it would be a logistical challenge to figure out what that would be. Therefore, we kind of have to discuss this off camera, which is kind of sad, but what are you going to do? Okay, one point goes to Italy. Okay, two points go to France, three to Greece. Okay, well that's... Four points go to Luxembourg. Okay, they still like Luxembourg. That is wild. Five points to Armenia. Six to Switzerland. At least Switzerland beat Armenia this time. Seven to Ireland. Eight to Croatia. Croatia still receiving a lot of love. By my guess, that really leaves Israel and Ukraine. So, who got the runner-up position? First runner-up goes to Ukraine. Yep, I called it. Israel for the second time in this rest of the world history wins the grand final public vote. I don't know, maybe one day Palestine will compete in a song contest, but today is not that day. Now with that whole deedly doodly out of the way, we're going to look at the semi-final results. 
And here they are from EurovisionWorld.com. We're going to run from the top all the way to the bottom so we can build some suspense on the most important bit of the semi-final recap. And that is who didn't quite make it, where they placed, and how close were they? Okay, first place was Croatia, second Ukraine, third Ireland. Oh, I should mention, Ukraine was only... Four points behind Croatia. Croatia had 177 and Ukraine had 173. Fourth place is Lithuania. Fifth is Luxembourg. Sixth is Cyprus. Seventh is Finland. Portugal is eighth. Slovenia is ninth. They have 51 points. And Serbia is tenth with 47. Very funny how Serbia was announced first yet getting tenth. Odd how that works. But now, time to see. Who was 11th in the first semifinal? Australia! Six points behind! Goodness sake, people still attach to Australia. And Electric Fields can probably say they have a better chance of making it to the grand final than Montaigne. 12th is Poland with 35 points. Oh, 12th? Only 12th? No lower? My goodness sake. But Iceland, Moldova, and Azerbaijan have yet to be called. And I kind of hope that Azerbaijan doesn't end up last, to be honest. Like, I don't really care for Iceland. And Moldova, well, really sweet. I feel there's a bit more originality to Azerbaijan's entry. 13th place is Moldova with 20 points. Poland at least has 35 this is concerning. Okay, who is second to last? It is Azerbaijan with 11 points, meaning very bottom of the table is Iceland with, uh, oh, this thing is too ashamed to tell me. Three points. Oh, that is hilarious. Iceland received one point from Cyprus and two from Sweden. Sweden, come off it, guys. I know, I know you're technically buddy-buddy, but uh, you don't have to show love for a song that you don't really love. Although, to be fair, Hera Björk was in this competition before. Next up, we have the second semifinal, and I really do hope that San Marino or Belgium or even Czechia just missed it. First place in the second semifinal was Israel with 194 points and second was Netherlands with 182? The fact that we still got the amount of points that Netherlands scored is just awe-inspiring, goodness sake. Spoiler alert, I did kind of suggest that Netherlands would place around Finland and Estonia. And that could still be true because the public voting in the final consists of more casuals than the semifinals, which are more like hardcore fans. But still, the love for Aeropapa is palpable. I wish I could could stop making all these bad jokes unknowingly. Okay, okay, okay. Third up is Armenia. Fourth is Switzerland. I need to review the public vote after all this. Fifth is Greece, although the gap here is rather tough. I mean, the gap between second and third is 100 and... 82 to 137, that equals 45 points. But 4th place was only 5 points behind Armenia, and 5th place is 86 points, which is 46 points less than 132. 6th up is Estonia, 7th is Latvia, 8th is Georgia, 9th is Austria, and Norway places 10. Georgia had 54 points, Austria 46, and Norway 43. But I am kind of nervous considering all those big points that were given at the top two. 11th place? Come on, big money, big money. Okay, Czechia. Fair. 38 points. Just a few points shy of Norway. Okay, 12th? 
Denmark? With 36 points, you kidding me, Denmark? You know, I feel rather sorry for Denmark. I didn't bring this up because I had forgot about it, but ever since the unprecedented times kicked off, they have just been NQing over and over again. Sometimes it's not their fault, but sometimes they just stun me with these dull songs that they've sent in, like 2022, 2023. They're not bad songs, but they're rather disappointing and not particularly evocative. Besides maybe turning the 2022 song into the theme of an Al House AMV. But 13th, there's Belgium. 18 points! What? The Vietnamese ramen! You gotta be- That is just sad! Not only did you place 13th, but you got that low amount of points. That is just- Honestly. That is just sickening. Belgium, after all, placed 4th in the OGAE fan poll. But ultimately, you have to look at how they perform on the night. Belgium admittedly didn't have the most inspiring stage, but there was some soul behind it. There was some heart behind it nonetheless. It's just sad to see. And it's even sadder to think that San Marino had picked up so few points. If they somehow placed 16 with only 2 points... No, they're probably going to get some points from Spain. I'll have to check on that, but let's continue. 14th is San Marino, okay, with 16 points. I honestly don't get what's wrong with me liking this song compared to so many other people. Maybe it's just the message is just unique to me. Maybe... There was that weird bit where she said, You like to party, but we love rock. And here's some flamenco! But still, just disappointing that they couldn't even beat, what was her name? You know, that person who performed in the early 2010s for San Marino. And eh, she's just some random nobody. But jokes about making off Valentina Moneta to be some nobody that no one understands aside, I am still kind of saddened by all this. I hadn't even brought up Albania in the second semi-final results because even though I thought it was a good song, I did see it was going to have some trouble getting out of there. But who is 15th? Just who? Albania. Okay, which means 16th place is Malta. Very ironic that the people chanting Malta at the end were chanting for a song that placed last by one point against Albania. Oof. All right, let's look at the scoreboard. I want to specifically see how San Marino placed 10 points from Spain. Naturally. Two from the rest of the world. One from Italy, because of course, and the oddest one is three from Georgia. You know what? Georgia's an aficionado for the weird, so, um, thumbs up Georgia, I guess? Thank you for sending us Stella Cole. Wait, that's the wrong Georgia. Why do I keep mixing up my Georgias? <laughs> Meanwhile, Malta also received four sets of points. Five from Armenia, one from France, three from Hellas, and... Four from San Marino. Also, San Marino didn't give points to one country in particular. The one who placed really super high. Then we have Albania. Might as well include them in this. They got five points from Hellas. Four from Italy. Two from San Marino. Oh, you kooky mad lads, you. And three from Switzerland. But yeah, looking back on this list, San Marino's proximity to last place really doesn't do particular wonders for me. But to think, we could have got Pedestal in the Grand Final! And I'm sure with the juries, they would eat this up and put this song on the podium! Not necessarily a pedestal, I don't think it would win, but the podium at least. Okay, no. Come to think of it, that that's likely not to happen. Ica would be lucky to get top 10, to be realistic. 
But yeah, put that up as song number five in the grand final. Goodness sake! Thanks, future self. Now, finally, we shall get into the public vote distribution. If you haven't already figured out how it works by now, the countries that receive the least points in the jurors get their public votes announced first, and we shall work our way up to Switzerland, who has the most jury vote points right now. But we're going to kind of sort of make this a hybrid of uh, the final score and also notable moments from the public vote distribution. We'll start a bit with building up the final score. Norway ends up in last place, 25th with 16 points. Austria gets 24th with 24 points. Slovenia gets 23rd with 27 points. Spain gets 22nd with 30 points. Georgia gets 21st with 34 points. Estonia gets 20th with 37 points and Finland gets 19th with 38 points. If Netherlands was still in the competition, I'd say they'd be somewhere around Estonia and Finland. Next, let's talk about the United Kingdom. They were around the middle when it came to the jury list, but then they got their televote points and they got zero points. Ooh, man. Zero! Zero! They got zero points from the public vote. Zero. But yeah, that places them 18th with 46 points all from the juries. Admittedly though, this is still a bit better than most of their performances in the 2010s. Wait, most of their performances? A significant amount. But let's focus on the announcements of points, because Israel is announced next. They are 12th in the jury placement, and they are announced 14th. But the amount they get from the public vote is 323 points, making them the temporary leader in points. First you say three Palestine, then you give them over 300 points, make up your mind. But yeah, I kind of wanted to highlight this for Germany's 2021 entry. You can have a polarizing entry and min-max your points that way. You have some people who will definitely not vote for you, but plenty of people who will vote for you in droves. Also, the fact that little points were kind of sort of being given out until we got to the 14th out of 25 public vote announcements to see substantial points from the public? Wow. Let me illustrate this. 17th place goes to Serbia. They got 54 points. 16th place goes to Latvia. They get 64 points. 15th place goes to Cyprus. They get 78 points. 14th place goes to Lithuania, they get 90 points. 13th place, now we're on the left-hand side of the leaderboard, is Luxembourg with 103. A surprising first outing after 30 plus years of not being in the contest, but I'm sure it has to do a lot with the novelty of seeing Luxembourg back. The magic will wear off. And then there's Germany. The fact that they placed 12th with 117 points isn't what's most interesting to me. It's that for the first time since 2018, they've escaped the bottom two. Please clap! And 11th is Hellas, Greece, with 126 points. Now we're on to the top 10, finally. And Portugal starts this off. They have... 10th place with 152 points, and then we get Sweden in 9th with 174. They couldn't even beat France. Look at him smog off in the corner after presenting the votes for Sweden. Look at him saying, I scored 5th place and I was underage. Unva stinking leaveable. And then we have 8th place Armenia with 183 points. Yeah, they have a more or less even distribution of points between the juries and the public vote, but wow. And then seventh place is Italy, but with 268 points total. Not only do we finally get to the over 200 points barrier, but with a big 
jump, you can start to see that a lot of points have been given to strictly the top seven in this scoreboard. And then when Ireland's points are announced, they get 278 points total, which is not enough to be the leader at the time, but wow, that is a shock. At the end of the day, sixth place, they haven't had a better score since 1997. What took you so long? I guess, finally, something had to light your fire, even if it was Sweden nipping at your heels. And if this is the start of a good, big rivalry, and these two countries, Sweden and Ireland, coming at each other with big entries, then I am all for it. And then, after all that, Israel would place fifth. But let's talk about Ukraine. The country that performed second in the running order and received from the public vote 307 televote points. That would ultimately not be enough to win the competition, but they placed third. Though they performed second in the running order, they placed third. They not only beat host Sweden, their final score, jury and public vote, is 453 points. Pretty maddening, but kind of a relief that they ultimately won't host the contest next year. Just logistically saying. Now, for the next announcement of public votes, we get Croatia. They're doing pretty solid in the jury vote, but then the public vote gives them 337 points. After seeing two over 300 pointers being given out, I didn't think you had it in you to not only crown another one, but the maximum amount of public vote points that were given to any one country this year. That's right, Croatia won the public vote. They would be in the lead for now with 547 points. But that leaves us with France and Switzerland yet to have their points announced. And France did... okay, they get a decent amount of points, over 200, but not enough to beat Croatia. They would place fourth with 445 points, and I guess that shows the definition of insanity is different in Eurovision, because this time France tried to copy voila, and uh, hope that they would get a similar result to Voila. Not quite. But then we finally get to Switzerland. They were starkly in the lead when it came to the jury vote, and they just need a minimum of 183 public vote points to win. Wait, this story sounds familiar to last year. But yeah, a lot of people were waiting, a lot of people were tense, and then finally, the announcement came. Switzerland, your public vote total is... 200! And then you couldn't hear anything else because you knew Switzerland won the competition with 591 points. And for some reason, the public vote is kind of more chill about this than they are about what happened last year. Last year, you could hear the cha-cha-chas. This year, everything was a bit more chill, even though Nemo placed lower in the public vote, placement, we're talking about placement, than Loreen. Loreen at least got second in the televote. Switzerland didn't even crack top three in the televote. But yeah, Nemo won the competition and stops by Ireland's booth to receive Bambi's crown of thorns? Wait, what? Wait, hold on. Nemo's not binary? I mean, I saw Nemo holding up the NB flag, but I thought that was in solidarity. You mean to tell me that for the first time ever, we have a non-binary winner in Eurovision? Pietra! Where the hell is Nemo? Shout out! I mean, it was bound to happen. We had our first transgender win in 1998, our first drag queen win in 2014, so I was expecting maybe a non-binary win around 2030? 
Wow, you really beat me on that one. And you know in the song that Nemo sang, the lyric goes, Like Canaanites, I just needed some time, and I found paradise? Yeah, the Canaanites spent 40 years in the desert, and Switzerland only spent 36. I guess God was like, yeah, you guys suffered a lot for not being able to win in 2020. I'm going to give you a 10% discount. But wow, when you think about Switzerland's journey, it's pretty interesting. After Celine Dion's win, they weren't doing too bad. But then came the 1990s. They were one of the last countries with a perfect attendance streak to finally have been relegated and had that streak broken. Yeah, they were kind of hurting in the 1990s and 2000s and especially the 2010s. Yeah, sometimes they would get some successes like Cool Vibes in 2005, Hunter of Stars in 2014. But it wasn't until 2019 that they finally built themselves back up and came into the top five for the first time in a long time with She Got Me. And then we got... Du l'univers in 2021, and that place stirred, and then came 2022 and 2023, where we kind of thought that Switzerland was out of it, really. But then came this year, and oh goodness, do they deserve it. Not to knock Croatia on this either, this is their highest placing by far as an independent country. I do say as an independent country because some people could make the argument that the Yugoslav win was a Croatian win. But the fact that Croatia finally broke out into the top 10 is astounding. And they more than deserve it with this song and with this performance. This is a legendary song that Baby Lasagna had sent in. And it doesn't hurt at all that I love this entrant from Croatia, considering, yeah, I wasn't entirely in love with Croatia's entries from time to time. Of course, both of them were right next to Slovenia. That was an awful spot for Slovenia, even though that song wasn't as daring as the Irish entry. I still feel very sorry for Raven. Other notable moments, this is the first time since 2013 that no automatic qualifier placed last in the grand final. Yes, I am dead serious. Even the big five have really put themselves up these days. In 2013, last place was Ireland. There are no automatic qualifier. But in 2014, last place was France. In 2015, last place was not only Germany, but also Austria, who were hosting that year's edition. In 2016, Germany. 2017, Spain. Well deservedly so, even before the rooster crow. Oh my goodness, I rhymed again. 2018, Portugal, the host country of that year. 2019, the UK, I think. The 2019 post results reconjiguring is still kind of confusing to me. 2021, the UK again with a double zero, 2022 Germany, 2023 also Germany. This year, it took until the fourth from last position to find an automatic qualifier. Maybe they're finally taking it seriously. Maybe they finally feel they have to keep their act up or else they will end up in the semifinals if they keep slacking off. Either way, this new era of aggression... If this is what it is, I'm looking forward to. Also, when you divide the results into fifths, each automatic qualifier, well, the big five actually, fits in neatly into each spot. The bottom fifth, or the fifth quintile, there's Spain. The fourth quintile, there's the UK. The third quintile, there's Germany. The second quintile, there's Italy. And the first quintile, there's France. But speaking of results, it must be pretty weird to get a DQ. I guess it's time we finally look at what happened to Netherlands. Yeah, future self, may I get your help again? Okay, let's discuss the Euro elephant in the room. Jost Klein. 
I want to make this quick, but ultimately, even though there's some information, probably, I can't count on that information being particularly accurate. I found a release statement on the Eurovision website, finally. It says the Dutch artist Joost Klein was disqualified from the following threatening behavior directed at a female member of the production crew. Joost's behavior was in clear breach of contest rules. Yikes. Okay. That's already not a great start, and especially, there is one thing I can say, because I know that at least one Dutch person is probably going to watch this. I don't really know how to feel about this, because if you don't know what exactly is happening, and you have no idea whether you're endorsing or condemning something by taking either particular action, the best bet would be to take the safe option and cut your ties, fire early. Okay, now I have a statement from Avratros to provide some extra context. Against clearly made agreements, Joost was filmed when he had just gotten off stage and had to rush to the green room. At that moment, Joost repeatedly indicated that he did not want to be filmed. This wasn't respected. This led to a threatening movement from Joost toward the camera, yada yada, etc. In our view, an exclusion order is not proportional to this incident. We are very disappointed and upset. Okay. I did have to truncate that a bit, but Dagnab, if this were true, and it's very probable, I am honestly just kind of saddened and in a way disgusted by the EBU, especially now that I see all these people cheering when Netherlands got called up and booing when no representative from the Netherlands took over and instead we got Martin Erstedal. Again, I am not 100% sure of what happened in the incident, but if it were true that there was a clear communication of uh, what the contestant wanted and didn't want and it was fair and within rights to demand and it wasn't respected and led to that altercation, that, that is just not great. And it honestly worries me as an autist. Let me just put this aside. It honestly worries me because I can come off as pretty loud and pretty blunt sometimes and some people make misconstrue that as an act of aggression. Yeah, yeah, autism is not an excuse, you might say, but I argue it's also the other way around. My autism is not an excuse for you to treat me like garbage and a lesser person. I have needs, and if you don't fulfill them, I have trouble processing the environment. Please come on, give me a hand. I'm not discounting the possibility that Joost did something very inappropriate and not in the mood with Eurovision. But so much of this really ticks me off. For starters, the fact that you didn't advance Ico when you had the chance to immediately disqualify Joost. I mean, you still could have had 26 participants and I could have had a top 4 from the semi-final 2 song make it in. But... The more pressing issue is, EBU, your vision's supposed to be about diversity and inclusion and all that sort of stuff. And if this is true, if this is due to a misunderstanding that got way out of hand, it could have been handled better than this. I, as an autist, am worried. There have only been two confirmed cases of our kind participating in the contest. And to think that this contest, which is supposed to represent the full human experience, won't accommodate even a part of that that is relatively benign and largely influential to the human community. It pains me, EBU. It really does.
I understand why you took that measure, and I understand, ultimately, that you have a standard to adhere to, and you got to protect people. But I'm not feeling protected at this moment, I feel threatened. I do want to compete in Eurovision, whether as a singer or as a composer, but... Man, this is disheartening. Whatever the answer is, come on, EBU. I believe in Eurovision. I believe Eurovision can be better and live up to its promise. And I want to compete in a contest where I know I want to be respected and accommodated. Whether it's the ESC, or the ASC, or the OTI Festival, or whatever. I've been hearing that Eurovision is a mess. But I still believe in it, not just because it's my special interest, but because I honestly can see a future for song contests. I honestly can see fruit on this tree, even though I have yet to reap it. I really didn't want to end it on a downer like this, because I wanted to end on a happy note, wanted to talk about how I have 37 more songs I can listen to, and how... I wanted to make a joke about how Netta shouldn't predict the next host city, but I'm gonna have to end it on this. If it were just the banal interval acts and the uninspired staging and really only the songs holding it up and hardly anything else, including the changes to the format, well fine, I would brush that off and I would move on to 2025 and hope we don't get destroyed by devastation on the way. That's a Power Rangers SPD reference. Can you believe we're almost there? But clear communication is key. And I honestly, despite what may have happened down there, feel that I'm not going to get proper communication. I'll do my best. If it were me, I would do my best. But this really shakes my confidence in trying to help out one of my favorite things I get to experience in my life. EBU, come on. Make a judgment, but at the very least, listen to your fans. At the very least, look back at your system and just strive to be better. You could always present as a better front-facing company. And if there's anything you feel needs to be changed, then change it, listen to the fans, bring on new blood, do whatever you have to do in order to make the contest fulfill its promise. Like Nemo said, live up to your promise. Allow people like me to feel free in participating, in expressing, even if we don't show up and compete on stage, even if we're just in the mosh pit, like God forbid, or in a Eurovision village, watching this at a rave, watching this at a hotel conference room, or whatever. We love this contest. We want to participate in this contest, but we want to feel safe in doing so. You're supposed to be, in a way, a beacon and also a shelter, but if we cannot trust the beacon? Then that's a dangerous position. I've always say, a child who is mistrustful of their parent is in a dangerous position if they still rely on their parent. And it is a similar situation here. And yeah, if it does sound like I'm gravitating a bit toward the Dutch opinion, well, part of that is because the Dutch and I have a tendency to be blunt in ways. And yeah, maybe their opinion is not 100% factual. After all, sometimes I can add a little bit of flair through my storytelling. But I still don't want to be concerned that any semblance of an event like this could happen to me. I just want to enjoy the contest like everyone else who does. And especially, I want to see the contest be better, whether it's working hard to keeping talent and bringing in the countries that have since dropped off to making sure that the tastes of the contests are true and faithful to what it tries to be and its legacy, honestly. 
the ESC can always be better. Success is not an excuse for it to be complacent, as I feel it is now, and I definitely want to enjoy the contest for decades and decades to come. Anyway, do the feedback thing. Like, comment, subscribe, or dislike because I have a particular sympathy for even New York City, I guess. Apparently, they're really good at cutting to the point, even though I and they may not see eye to eye. At least, uh, there's something we have in common, I guess. This has been J.E. Realize. I'll see you next time, and I'm gonna close out with some thoughts I had on my first listen to the Swiss song, the winner of the contest before I had any idea, just to bring back some levity in the final moments. Hasta la sintonia. Okay, 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 okay! My goodness sake! I don't even know what to say after that one. Like, that is just bold, sweeping, in your face, like... Like, it is so weird, but it catches... It's so weird at first, but then it catches your... It, it catches your attention. But then it becomes this mix of pop and avant-garde and that little beat in the back. Like... The rapping is... What? Like, this song! Grabs your attention, makes you go, what?